Now, to do justice to this is uh, Ekemini Phillips. Uh, she's back with us today on the show for nutrition. Uh, she's an integrative nutrition health coach and the co-founder of Healthy Eating Little People. Hmm, okay. <laughs> uh, the focus this morning is uh, aging elimination. Now, we are not talking about cutting off people, no, because you heard me talk about little people. It's just uh, like a rounding off of everything we've been talking about for yes, a while now. But it's yes. great to have you on the show, Ekemi. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. Thank you so, so much. So I know we've been talking about supporting nutrition, yeah. digestion, and all of that. And today we're now going to talk about the last loop in the process, which is as important as the digestion, the ingestion, and the absorption. Mm. And then again, if you do not eliminate those undigested food and metabolic waste, what happens is that it's going to get reabsorbed back into the bowels and then it gets transported through the bloodstream all around your organs, which might um, be damaging to some of the organs and the cells. So it's very important that after the whole digestion and absorption, that the body actually gets rid of that metabolic waste and undigested food materials. Okay. So you see, it's a topic we really need to talk about because if we don't do this, a lot of things can go wrong um, with elimination. We have people talking about constipation. Yes, whereby that's a major problem. It's a major thing, yeah. whereby the amount of water which is being extracted from the undigested food is not a lot, it's so little is so much such that the, the stool now becomes hardened mm. and then it stays longer in the bowels, which what gives rise to constipation. On the flip side, which you have diarrhea, mm. meaning the amount of water in the undigested food that has been absorbed is so little or nothing is absorbed at all. Wow. And then we have semi-liquid stools and watery stools. Another thing that can go wrong with elimination is where you have something called MSCs, which is a forceful eruption of food through the mouth, which is an abnormality on itself because food is actually supposed to come in through the mouth, not out of the mouth. So when you have food forcefully being erupted through the mouth, it can be triggered by an irritation, such as trauma, such as emotional stress, even food poisoning, oh. and some pathogens like fungi, bacteria, and microbes. So getting rid of that undigested food materials and the metabolic waste is very important to reduce our toxic levels in the body. Okay, you, you've actually said a lot, and I find it very interesting okay. that, um, you know, there's, there's so much to learn when it comes to this. Yeah. I, I like the fact that you've taken it from the beginning to the end. But Absolutely. Without, before we even end it completely, because you do sound like you've already rounded up, I would like you to just quickly run us through the entire process from uh, the first process to this process okay. and the importance of each. Okay, so just before I do that summary bit for you, there's, there are some steps that you and I can take in order to aid our body's ability to eliminate this okay. waste. Number one, stay hydrated. Okay. I know we've been talking about this right from the previous sessions, drink about two liters of water a day. Again, this is not black and white and it's not... Um, um, a given for everybody. It's, it can vary with sex, with your location, mm -hmm. with your activity level. But for ladies, for women, adult women, I would say take two liters to 2.5 liters of water every day. Okay. For the men, aim for 2.5 liters to three liters of water every day. Number okay, so one step. The liters, that's the big bottle. Yeah. It you know, yes, one liter. One liter so I'm saying the ladies aim for two half. liters okay. and a half. Okay. For the men, aim for 2.5 liters to three liters. Okay. Again, number two step is eat a fiber-rich diet. Fiber acts like a sponge in the digestive tract. So what that means is it's going to bind onto toxins and waste and help to pull it out of the digestive tract. So as it's been eliminated, it also takes them along. It also takes them along. Okay. It helps with the bowel movement. It helps to keep things soft in there. And again, from a nutritional point of view, I would say try to aim for 35 grams of fiber intake every day. If you're finding it difficult to incorporate that into your daily meals, you can work with a nutrition health coach to help factor that amount of fiber. And then you can get your fiber from your leafy greens, your whole grains, your whole proteins, and then any, any vegetable with the skin intact. Mm -hmm. Now, what we don't know is that most nutrients in our foods, our grains, our legumes, are actually found 
either on the skin or right beneath the skin. Oh. Again, that's where most of the fiber content is also and found. And that's where we usually scrape off. That's exactly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so just wash thoroughly. You know, you can use a veggie wash if you want and then eat as normal. That now brings us to maybe fruits, um, fruit juices or smoothies. Okay. You know, with fruit juices, we've pressed out the juices and then we are taking them without the fiber content. Mm -hmm. But with smoothies, everything is all ground up nicely with the roughage and the fiber on all the plant cellulose inside. Mm. Now, ingesting a fiber-rich smoothie is going to be more helpful in terms of elimination as against a fruit Just juice. Just taking juice, okay. Yes. Then number three point is stay active. Stay I mean, active. leading a sedentary life would not help things moving at all in the bowel. No, you, you wonder a lot of people say, oh, after exercise, I had the hot urge to go to for go, number yeah. two. Yeah. yeah, so that just um, balances out, out there. Stay active as much as possible because what actually helps to keep things moving in the bowel is a forceful contraction. It's called peristalsis. So you can imagine if you're already helping your body to stay active, that, those forces of contraction is going to get more powerful. Yeah, it makes and it easier. Exactly, I keep drawing things down. So those the are line. the three steps. Stay hydrated, the eat more fiber. The final one is okay. keep your stress levels from the check. Stress levels affect elimination. Absolutely. So when you're stressed, mm -hmm. your, when your stress levels, your cortisol levels are actually elevated, your body is not going to think about digestion and rest, not mm -hmm. to talk of elimination. All what your body is going to think of is calming stress, relaxing, and keeping you sane and sound. It's just like you and I sitting here, we see a lion coming. We're not going to start thinking about healthy eating. All, the first thing in our mind is running away from this lion. Wait, I don't understand. I will see a lion coming, and so I will still be thinking of thinking of running. <laughs> Absolutely. So they, just they, when I, I've, already, I've already reached the gate of the compound. <laughs> like, seriously. But you know, it's Ooh. such a pleasure to have had you this past few weeks just uh, teaching us all of these processes. Yeah. And I really hope that uh, we've all been able to learn. I was hoping we could get the step by step, but unfortunately, we won't be able to do that. So what you do is catch up with past episodes and you can also watch this one again on social media and of course via our YouTube channel. Thank you so much.